welcome to episode 177 of the Craft House Magic Podcast. My name is Ellie and I'm coming to you from Norwich in Norfolk in the UK and today is the 12th of August so welcome everybody. I hope you've all had a lovely crafty week since the last time I've spoken to you and I'm here to share all the things that I've been making in the last seven days. So today I have some knitting, some sewing, a gadget, a couple of questions from the Ask Me Anything thread and some information on my shop at the end of the podcast. So you can skip to any of those sections by using the progress bar at the bottom of the video um, if you want to skip to anything in particular and we have a couple of make-alongs both in the Ravelry group and on Instagram and I have uh, information and links to those in the description bar down below so let's get on with the knitting shall we and the first thing I have to show you and these are perfect newborn socks by Tabitha Gandhi and I started them last week and I just finished them off so they are a basic sort of top down heel flap and gusset sock but for babies and they have a ribbed ankle and all of the top of the foot so that there's a lot of sort of stretch and they should stay on the baby's feet and they are knitted in some gorgeous yarn that is from Ducky Darlings. It's a 75% merino and 25% nylon and I think they're going to be very very cute. So I used the 2.25 millimeter needles as stated in the pattern and I think these are going to be lovely. Hopefully they'll fit and I'm going to hopefully knit a few more pairs as well before the baby's born. So that's one finished object done and I have a second one to show you. Now this one is knitted by Liz, Adam's mum and it is a newborn vertebrae and it is obviously knitted for a newborn <laughs> but this is a free pattern as well which is absolutely lovely and it's designed so that um, the baby doesn't actually have much cardigan on its chest so that if it, if it does have a little accident, if it's sick, <laughs> then it doesn't get on the cardigan which is lovely. So I give it a block um, so that it looks lovely and neat and ready to wear and it's knitted from this gorgeous yarn and it's a leading men's fibre arts yarn that my lovely friend Peggy gifted for me and this is called the greatest day of the year and again this is a 75% merino 25% nylon and it's lovely and soft and that is going to be in the drawer ready for the baby she just knitted the standard um, newborn size but I believe that they do have a paid for pattern that's for larger children as well so that's number two finished object and I have a number three finished object so I've knitted this one and this is a thicker jumper and this is actually for a naught to three months um, baby and it's knitted in an Aran weight yarn. So this is called Short Notice by Tega Hillard I think, I'm not sure whether that's how you pronounce it correctly but I will leave links in the description bar down below so you can find the pattern. But it's such a cute pattern because it's basically like a cardigan but the buttons do up at the side which I think is gorgeous. And the one in the actual picture had some lovely stripes on. And I'd got some turquoise blue and some grey yarn just in my stash. And I thought, well, those would go together quite nicely. So I decided to put those together and finish one of these. And I just found this a real joy to knit. Although at the end there were a lot of ends to sew in because I did the striping. But of course you don't have to do the striping and you could do it all in one yarn. So there are various sizes in this pattern actually and it's a free pattern. But I knitted the 0 to 3 months and in total I took 105 grams of this Aran weight yarn. So I've got some, um, an entire ball of the Aran pure wool which is basically, it just it's 100% superwash wool but it doesn't tell you what breed it is. But it does feel really really soft. And I had this blue colour here, and it was an Aran weight yarn, but it was a cashmere, merino and nylon mix. Um, but they felt very, very similar, so I popped those together um, to make that garment. And you can see that I've added some buttons down the side, and I just shopped my stash once I'd finished knitting it. I just did the buttonhole size that the pattern said. I was trying to undo all these buttons on camera <laughs> to show you what it looks like opened up. So you can see that it opens right up there and you can 
do the buttons up at the side which I think is lovely and I saw on the photos for the pattern that there was one for quite a an older child as well which is lovely as well this is really really thick but I thought I might need something really warm because the baby's due at the end of November so over sort of December and January um, hopefully it'll fit <laughs> so that is my third finished object I do have plans to make some hats and booties to match these two garments so that they've got little sets so like I said all three of those patterns are free and I'll leave links to those in the description bar down below as well as the yarns as well I have a work in progress though I'm afraid I haven't done loads on this cardigan because I'd been busy fiddling around with baby clothes and choosing patterns and things <laughs> So watch out, there will be more, more baby stuff coming. Um, so last week I showed you I'd knitted that much on this that sleeve and then I'd literally just started, pick it, I picked up the stitches on this sleeve and I've just knitted until under the arm so that I'm actually working in the round now and I'm going to probably change my needles into a 12 inch circular so it's nicer, small circumference to knit round there. And then I've just got to finish the arms and do all the neckband. So I'm hoping to focus on this this week, this coming week, so that I can get that finished. Because I feel like I've been knitting on this for absolutely ages. And this is the Sparkle Cardigan by Hohi Locatelli. And I love this textured knit pattern, which is all over the garment. And the yarn that I'm using is Pretty in Pink on my Merino Nylon base that I sell on my online shop. So I'm not going to talk too much about it because I feel like I've been bringing it out every week showing a little tiny bit of progress. Next week it's going to be finished hopefully. <laughs> so that's all the knitting I've got to show you but I do have some sewing and I went a little bit mad with sewing cardigans and tops at the weekend so I've got a couple to show you. <laughs> so Barbara would you like to come over and show us what you've got on? Thank you very much Barbara. So Barbara is wearing another Blackwood cardigan. <laughs> So last week I had cut out my size and did a grey version of the longer Blackwood cardigan and I decided that actually it was just that little bit too long on me. Um, so the original pattern comes in two designs. You can have a really long cardigan which is halfway down your thigh meets and then there's a shorter one which is just a little bit too short for me to feel really comfortable in. So what I decided to do is make the longer version and then I just feel that I I just felt like it was a really little tiny bit long on me so actually if I just took the butt, bottom band off it would be the perfect length. So what I did with this one is I actually just omitted the bottom band and then I changed the band that goes around the neck just to make it long enough so that I didn't, it didn't encompass the bottom band, if that makes sense. So I took a few inches off there so that it fitted nicely and for the bottom of the cardigan I basically just used my cover stitch to hem it on the side panels and then added the button band afterwards. Like the first one I made, the grey one, I also did a slightly shorter sleeve as well, a three quarter length sleeve and I did that by working out a, a top that I'd already got, the Coco top by Tilly and the Buttons, that was a three quarter length sleeve. So I sort of measured roughly how long I wanted it on these pattern pieces, marked it off and then cut a smaller piece for the sleeve and then I adapted the cuff pattern so that the cuff would fit further up the arm because it's slightly wider up there. I'm really really happy with the length of the sleeves and actually now that I've done a slightly shorter version of this cardigan I'm really pleased and this is in a coral pink so there we go Barbara gives us a twirl you can see all the way around it's plain at the back and then we've got these lovely big pockets at the front here which I absolutely love I think that really finishes the cardigan off nicely because I actually put the pockets on last on this particular one because I used my cover stitch machine to finish off around the seams the last version I did I did a zigzag stitch like it said on the pattern I just sort of followed it uh, but this one I thought I'd have a go at using my cover stitch machine so I found my cover stitch machine my, I've got a, a Benina Funlock B42 um, it, it doesn't work very well with the thickest types of jersey so I have to be really careful using it on um, things like this material Material, which is like a double knit or a Ponte Roma sort of material and this is quite a high cotton content in this though so it's lovely and soft and comfortable to wear 
and I use the cover stitch around the pockets as well. I think the zigzag um, looks equally as nice. So I used the two needle stitches around the pocket. I could have just used a single one and gone all the way round, but I just did each side separately. Um, so that, cause obviously with the two needles, you can't go around corners in like a square shape, if that makes sense. But there we go. And I actually, I've made another one of these. So Barbara, would you like to show us that one as well? Blimey Barbara, that was quick. <laughs> so I also made a blue one in the same sort of material in a Ponte Roma. You can see there actually how I turn up the cuff to make it sort of a shorter one, otherwise it comes up a little bit long. But I did this one exactly the same as the coral one using the cover stitch machine down the front and um, really pleased with the length so I made the coral one first decided that I really liked that length and then I put, I just made this one as well and it's used up quite a few meters out of my stash I did find that for my size I think I cut out a size 20 more or less um, on, in the Blackwood cardigan, but without the bottom band, I could get it out of a metre and a half of 60 inch wide fabric, which is absolutely fantastic because I've got a couple of metre and a half cuts in my stash. So I used this, these two up already and I just love them. So I'm gonna give you a bit of a twirl in the lounge of these two, but before I show you those on me, I'm quickly gonna show you two Agnes t-shirts that I also whipped up at the weekend. So I made this one, and it, I basically used the standard Agnes pattern that I normally do uh, but I did originally I just reduced the length of the sleeves because I like a short sleeve t-shirt and I just used the standard neckline and I think I used a, a size slightly smaller on the shoulders and then I graded out to a larger size at the bust and the hips to fit me um, after I'd made a couple that I thought fitted lovely I then I've just got the pattern ready to use whenever I like it and this gorgeous gorgeous fabric is from Elsa Fabrics I don't think that they have any of this in stock at the moment because it was a little while ago when I bought it but they do have some beautiful watercolour prints in the shop still I will leave a link to the website. I might actually, when I have a look at putting the links together, I might have another look at the website, see if there's any nice ones <laughs> that I need. <laughs> I also made this one up, which is exactly the same pattern. And um, this is some fabric that I'd picked up from Fabrics Galore. And this is a lovely floral fabric uh, with like a dusky pink background, which I thought was really lovely too. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop these t-shirts on and have a twirl in the lounge so that you can see what I look like. So excuse me for wearing leggings, I normally wear jeans with this but they're not fitting at the moment because of my baby bump. But you can see this length, I just love this length. I think for when it's really cold it's nice having it a little bit longer but this is one that I'd wear all the time I think. And I think that these two fabrics pair up really nicely. So this is the fabric I got from Elsa Fabrics and this is the double knit or Ponte Roma. And I think I picked this up from a shop in Shrewsbury, um, but it was a long time ago. So you wouldn't be able to get exactly the same one anyway. I love these pockets, such a comfortable outfit to wear and I'd pair these with jeans normally, I think rather than leggings, but they're very comfy around the house. To wear with my baby bump. Give you a bit of a twirl. So here's the other one. Luckily my t-shirts are still fitting over my bump at the moment. There are some adjustments you can do for a standard t-shirt to get them to fit over a baby bump um, but these ones I want to wear sort of after the child's born as well so I just thought I'd make the standard version and then I do have some floatier things that I can wear when I get a bit bigger later on. But Okay, so I wouldn't just wear these cardigans with these particular tops. They'll go with a lot of other things in my wardrobe as well, but they're basically exactly the same. It's quite nice to be able to cut a few things of the same thing out and have a bit of a sewing session and get lots done. So there we go. That's what I've been making this weekend. Right, so I'm now going to go on to the gadget section. I did actually do some spinning and some crochet this week, but I did such a small amount that I don't feel as if it's worth showing you. So hopefully next week I'll have a bit more to show you so that you can actually see some progress. <laughs> so the gadget for this week 
is Eucalan wool wash. There are actually, I've used soak as well, which is really good, but this is the one I tend to use the most, Eucalan. And in my shop, I stock the little sample sizes and the 100ml ones, which I find really useful. Um, the 100ml ones do about 20 washes, so if you're if you're doing sort of a project you're blocking every week that'll still last you a little while and this is a one one sort of wash size this particular one is lavender scent and this is probably my favorite one the supplier also does them in 500 ml bottles but i i haven't got those in my shop just yet but i may do if a couple of people ask me if i would stock it but they do do other flavours as well. They do an unscented, they do jasmine, eucalyptus and grapefruit as well. And actually they're all really nice. It's just that lavender is my favourite one. And it also means you don't have to rinse the, the project out after you've had to soak it. You can just squeeze the water gently out, which is always good when you're washing delicates really. It just saves you from agitating it too much. And I use those to wash the baby knits that I've made and blocked to show you today. So the next section is the Ask Me Anything section. And I've got a couple of questions from the Ravelry group. So if you have a question, you can pop your question over on the Ask Me Anything thread on the Ravelry group. But if you don't use Ravelry, you can always email me on crafthousemagic at gmail.com. And I'll leave a link to the Ravelry group and also my email address in the description bar down below. So the first question is from Susan and she was saying that when she buys clothes she quite often has to go up a size because her arms are sort of one size bigger than the rest of her body and she wanted to know how do I adjust um, knitting patterns to accommodate for that. Now you absolutely do not need to knit the same size body as the arms for your sort of size bracket. What I tend to do is look at the the size round the sort of the bust and the upper bust and pick my body size from the chart on the knitting pattern and then I think right I measure my arm and work out what size that I need to knit for my arm as well so it doesn't need to match up exactly you just start knitting the body size that you want to stick to and then once you split for the sleeves um, carry on knitting the body and when you go back to the sleeves if you just pick up enough stitches so that you've got the same stitch count as the size that you need um, then you're knitting something that fits it doesn't need to be the same arm size as the body if that makes sense the one that goes with it according to the pattern you knit it according to what size you need to fit you so I quite often I find that because I've got quite a big bust and a big tummy that my arms are actually one size smaller than the pattern that I'm knitting so what I tend to do is when I'm going back to knit the sleeves I tend to do some decreases just under the arm to go down to the size that I need to knit for my size of my arm so you're knitting it to accommodate the size of you not just following a straight pattern if that makes sense and you can do it. it is it is easier than it sounds so say there's say an eight stitch difference between two sizes in a fingering weight garment for instance um, and I've got I've basically picked up the amount of stitches that the pattern says for the size that matches up with the body but then what I'll do is I'll decrease down to go to the size that is that eight stitches smaller as soon as I can I decrease under the arm so that I then have the size that fits and I just carry on then knitting the size that fits my arm rather than the one that just matches the body panel so you can adjust it and it's much easier than you think to make adjustments to knitting patterns so I hope that answers your question Susan and I hope that gives you a bit more confidence to pick the size of sleeve to knit compared to the body and do one that fits exactly your measurements so the next question is from Sandy and she was saying about moths in yarn and that she's had experience of moths eating a beautifully handmade blanket made out of sock yarn and also lost quite a number of pairs of socks in her husband's sock drawer because moths have got to them and she was asking me have, if I've ever had issues with with moths before now I haven't had issues with moths um, although I well I should really see I've got some yarn stored 
out in the open there really and truly you should seal things so that moths can't get in but I just like the look of it <laughs> so I've left it there but I do take some precautions I do have a little seahorse just up there that is filled with lavender because strong smells are supposed to repel moths and I do have a big massive tin of lavender in this room as well so I only really keep my yarn in this room so hopefully the smell of the massive tin of lavender that's out of my garden should keep them away another thing I tend to do is I do not leave the window open in this room without being in it as well at the same time so I'd be able to see if anything comes through the window just to be a bit precautious but to be honest the best thing you can do is seal your yarn up in like plastic sealable bags or or some sort of tub just so that the air doesn't get to it but I haven't luckily had any issues with moths but I have heard about it a lot in the past so it's always best to be safe than sorry and I've heard people using mothballs as well to keep them away I think lavender and mothballs are a nice strong smell so that it repels them theoretically I have heard some cases where the lavender doesn't always work though so it isn't completely you know it doesn't completely work all the time it's just a sort of extra precaution to take but my advice is to seal your yarn stash up but I hope that helps Sandy and I hope there's no more moth infestations in the future so the last section is my shop update and I just wanted to say that I've literally got one last advent calendar and it is in Stellina and it's the 20 grams for 12 days advent calendar all the others have sold out so once that one is gone there'll be none left in the shop I still have some sock sets that come with the project bag and the knitting patterns as well, the Starlight Wishes theme as well. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take those down on the end of Sunday, so make sure if you want to buy one of those sets that you buy them before the end of Sunday, um, before I take the listing down, but there's not many left anyway. And um, last but not least, I just wanted to say that the Clover Circular Stitch Holders that I showed on the gadget for last week, um, the shorter ones are out of stock, but tomorrow they will be restocked. So if you hold on um, ordering for an extra day, if you were thinking of adding one of those to your order, because they will be restocked. Okay, so thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you'd like to see more, and I shall see you in the next episode. Bye!